When you search for PDF on the GPT marketplace, you see this custom GPT with over 700,000 uses. It's called PDF AI. And if we wanted to, we could actually take this custom GPT off of the ChatGPT platform and onto our own personal website where we could keep control of our own data, keep control of our customers' data, and also charge our users to use it. To do so, I'm gonna use Bubble, which in my opinion is the easiest no-code web app builder on the net. I've been building with Bubble for a long time, so it's always my go-to. And if you wanna have a custom GPT that stores and interacts with your customers' PDFs, you're gonna need this multi-step process. First off, I'm gonna to go to plugins. You're gonna to need to install the API connector, and we need to connect that to OpenAI. If you're completely new to all this, OpenAI is the parent company of ChatGPT. ChatGPT is their product, but we also have the option to use their developer platform where we can use their API. So I'm gonna expand this quickly to connect to their API. We're gonna need two shared headers. First is content-type, and the value is application slash JSON. Then the next key is authorization, and the value is bearer space, and then your secret key. To get your secret key, go to platform.openai.com, and on the left side, hover over API keys, click create new secret key. I'm gonna call this store PDF, click create secret key, copy this, and paste it into your bubble app like so. Next, we're only gonna need one API call and that is to their chat completions model. So I'm gonna expand GPT. I like to use it as an action. The data type is JSON. It's a post request, and we're posting to this URL. For the JSON body, it needs to look something like this. All of those keywords colored in green means they're dynamic. And dynamic in bubble means that you can change them within your application. So they're not a set parameter. And doing so opens up all of these input boxes. This is just a test API call to make sure the model is working. We're calling GPT 3.5 Turbo. We're telling it to count to 10. And then we're adding an extra layer of a prompt that says speak French. So I'm going to reinitialize call. This means it's a successful call. I'm going to scroll down. The only thing we need is the message content. That is a text field. And right away it's saying un, which is one in French. I'm going to click save. So to store our customers' PDFs, it means we're gonna to have to create a user data type. We are storing files that are related to each user. In the data tab, I'm gonna create a new data type. Let's call that PDFs, hit create. In the PDF data type, we're gonna create a new field. The field name is gonna be called PDF. That field type is going to be a file. Let's hit create. I'm gonna create another field. Let's call this content. This field type is gonna be text. And then on the user data type, which is there by default, ignore all these fields. We created them in previous videos. I'm gonna click create a new field. This field name is gonna be called PDFs. And the field type is actually gonna be the data type PDFs that we created. Also select this field is a list, which means multiple entries. Click create. So instead of a text, a number, or a yes, no variable, we are actually storing this PDF data type onto the user data type. Bubble allows you to create layers on layers. We could even create another layer, create a new field of another data type, and list them on those PDFs. It makes it really easy to connect everything in the database together so that you can search it up when it's needed. Because we are storing data on a user, we're gonna need a way for our visitors to sign up to our website so that their details are in our system. I created a new page called Home. I'm gonna click Components, scroll all the way down. Here is the sign up login pop-up. Let's drag it onto the page. I'm gonna to go to Workflow, add a new event. When the page is loaded, we are going to go Elements, Toggle. Let's choose that pop-up. So the page is loaded, that pop-up appears to the visitor. And then on that pop-up, I'm gonna click on the sign up button, add workflow. We're gonna to click to add an action, account, sign the user up. Email is going to be input sign up emails value. 
password is going to be input sign up passwords value. We're going to require a password confirmation. That confirmation is going to be input sign up re enter passwords value. And then we're going to change one more field. Full name is equal to input sign up names value. Awesome. Once we sign the user up, the next step in the workflow, we're going to navigate them to a page and that's going to be our store PDFs page. Now on that store PDFs page, we need a way for our users to upload their PDFs. I'm going to find the file uploader element, drag it onto the page. Let's make it something like 150 pixels wide and 50 pixels tall. Instead of click to upload a file, let's change that placeholder text. Click to upload a PDF. Let's center it on the page, make it 25 pixels from the top. And then I'm going to go to workflow, click to add an event. We're going to go to elements when an inputs value is changed and it automatically grabs that file uploader. We're going to go data, create a new thing. The type is going to be PDF. And then one of the fields is PDF equals this file uploaders value. That means we're storing the file. Then we're going to add another action after that data, make changes to a thing. We are changing the current user and we are going to add PDFs, add to the list, the result of step one. So we're creating a new PDF data type and then we're adding that PDF to the user's account. Bubble has a really handy free plugin called convert PDF to text. And if we wanted to interact with PDFs within ChatGPT, it actually has to use code interpreter in order to do so. This is like our own code interpreter on the bubble platform. So make sure you install that plugin. Now in workflows, we can add another step. I'm going to go to plugins, convert PDF to text. The PDF URL is going to be this file uploaders value. And then we can add an action data, make changes to a thing. We are changing the PDF we created in step one and we're going to go content equals the result of step three that plugin actions text, whatever text is in that PDF that we get in step three, we add that to the content field of our PDF. It's very easy to visualize now that we can interact with this data. Now that we have stored the text of the PDF on that data type within the user data type, we can use GPT-4 or GPT-3.5 to talk to that text, answer questions about it, and then display it to the user. It's like we're hosting our own knowledge base of files on our system. I like to add two more actions to clean up the UI. The first is going to be element actions, reset inputs. It's going to reset that file uploader to empty so that the user can upload another PDF file. And then I'm going to go to design, find the browser plugin, drag that onto the page. Now I can go to workflow actions, element actions, show alert pop up in browser. And then write something like you have successfully added a PDF to your knowledge base. Please upload another. All right, let's test what we have so far. I land on the home page and I get the sign up pop up. My name is Wes GPT. My email is heywestfrank at gmail.com. My password is one, two, three, four, five, re-enter password, hit sign up. There we go. It takes me to the store PDFs page. I'm going to click to upload a PDF. I have three sample ones right here. Let's click the first one. There we go. You have successfully added a PDF to your knowledge base. I'm going to click OK. I can click to upload another one. Let's add the second one. Hit open. There we go. And one more. This is the last PDF. Click open. All good. Let's click OK. I'm going to go back to bubble. Refreshing the data shows my new user. And then there's three PDF files attached to this user. Now if I go to PDFs, we see the three PDFs that we uploaded. It's three PDFs about business and marketing. And we see that the plugin has extracted the text from the document and put it under content. What if you wanted your users to interact with the knowledge base? Well, first you need an input. I'm going to find that element, drag it onto the page. Let's make it 300 pixels wide, 50 pixels tall. For the placeholder, I'm going to write, ask a question about your knowledge base. And then I'm going to add a button, let's drag it onto the page. I'm going to write ask in the button for the layout. Let's make it hundred pixels wide and 50 pixels tall. I'm going to click this 
hold shift, click the input box, right click, group elements in a row container. Let's space them out, maybe 15 pixels from the button. In the group, I'm gonna fit width to content and I'm gonna center it and then make it 25 pixels from the top element. Now I'm gonna click the ask button, go to add workflow. When that button is clicked, we're gonna to go to plugins, open AI GPT. For the model, I'm gonna use GPT 3.5 turbo. The system content message is gonna be, use the following text to answer this question. And then the question is that inputs value. And for the content message, we can go insert dynamic data, current users, PDFs, and then scrolling down each item's content. So we are feeding the entire knowledge base into the API call so that we can answer the user's question. Now, I bet you have a few thoughts right now and you're right. If your user has a really large database, you're gonna be using a lot of tokens for each API call, which is why I like using GPT 3.5 Turbo instead of GPT-4. It's a lot cheaper. It's literally 20 times cheaper to use GPT 3.5 Turbo over GPT-4. If your user's knowledge base had something like 10,000 words in it, I take that number, divide it by 750, because for every 1,000 tokens is around 750 words, and then we times that by 0 0.0005. The API call would not even cost us one cent to make. That's pretty good. A 10,000 word database is large, but they get larger, and the context window length of GPT 3.5 Turbo is only 16,000 tokens. I go 16 times 750, it's only 12,000 words long. If things start getting larger, you have to use GPT-4 Turbo. You get up to 128,000 tokens for a context length, but it's a lot more expensive. Even if you want to use the assistance API and the retrieval feature, it costs money too. This is 20 cents per every gigabyte. And then you have three cents per session reading the PDF file. There's no way to get around these costs as of yet, but we can be creative. We could also go to data, PDFs, click on the data type, create a new field, call it summary. That field type is a text, hit create. And then in our workflow, when the user uploads a PDF, we can add another step, plugins, open AI GPT, system content message is summarize this text. And then the body content is the result of step three, that convert PDF to text, it's result. So basically, if you predict that your users are gonna be uploading hundreds of PDF files, you can always summarize each of them when they're uploaded and then interact with the summary instead of the full PDF text. That's just one way to chunk the data to save on costs. I'll let you use your own imagination to fix this problem, but solving this in a cheap and efficient way already puts your custom AI app way above the rest. Back to our ask workflow. We've made the call to GPT 3.5 Turbo. It's reading the knowledge base. It's answering the user's question. Now we need another action. We need to display it on the page for the user. I like to use custom states. So I'm gonna to go to design. Let's add a text element to the page. Then I'm gonna click outside of the page, click the eye icon, add a new custom state call it result. That state type is a text, click create. And then in the text element under appearance, we're gonna insert dynamic data, click the page name, and then the result custom state. Now in workflows, the last action can be element actions, set state. We're setting the state of the page, the custom state is result, and the value is gonna be whatever the result of step one, that API call, choices, first items, message content. It's just a fancy way of saying whatever GPT 3.5 Turbo spits out, we're gonna display it on the page. Now for the test, I'm gonna ask my knowledge base a question. I'm going to ask, why is marketing an essential component? Let's click the button. And it says it's an essential component of any business because it involves creating awareness of the company's products, services, 
and brand identities for consumers to see. And if I look in my PDF content, I'm gonna click the edit button here. Awesome, it says the exact same thing. It says it involves creating awareness of a company's products, services, and its overall brand identity for consumers to see. It pulled that information from our knowledge base, amazing. If you have your own custom GPT and want to turn it into a web application, host it on your website, find your own customers, charge your own users, and make some money, check out the online course I created. The link is in the description below. If you go to this page and click View Syllabus, you can see everything that I teach in the course. From Bubble Fundamentals, Advanced Concepts, adding every AI feature you can imagine, and then how to monetize your app so that you can turn it into a profitable AI side hustle. And if you like this video, I've put two more on the screen right now. They are both catered to your personal interest. So I want you to click one of them, give it a watch, and I'll see you in there. Peace.